Greetings everyone, TJB Chris here welcoming you to part 5 of the Model 16B restoration. This is uh, not so much restoration as it is diagnostics. Uh, before we move on to the 68,000 complement of boards, I want to make sure the system is in decent shape on the Z80 side. So the basic Tristos diagnostics pass as you saw in my previous video, but now it's time to go through some of the other tests. And the main ones I'm really worried about here, uh, we can't run them all obviously, but the ones I'm really worried about here are RAM, uh, the system memory, and video memory. Uh, the floppy drive stuff I'm going to hold off on uh, for now. And it's really memory and that the CPU, CTC, PIO interrupts all that stuff. So we're going to pop this in. The only cards currently in the machine are the Type 2 hard disk interface board with the extra 16K and the keyboard and video board. And they're in the correct order per the service manual. So we're going to walk through a couple of these diagnostics. And once these are done, we're going to try the T Tristos 2 um, that's Tristos II version 4.2 memory test um, that has a full system test that destroys DOS and we're going to do that as well. When that's done we'll boot up uh, two or three different operating systems and just kind of do some stuff around them, play with some commands or you know, start basic, just kind of get an idea of whether the systems are working and see if each of the three operating systems I currently have for this will work. Let's get to it. Alright, I'm going to apologize in advance for the reflection uh, in the screen. I'm Hope it doesn't make it too hard to see. Let's just zoom in a little bit there. Maybe we can at least make it so you can still read the text. All right, I'm gonna apologize for that. And again, static shot. This isn't exactly the most riveting stuff, but I'm just gonna walk through what I'm gonna do here. So first place we're gonna go is the drive menu. And the reason for that is I really want to make sure that the memory on the hard disk interface board is working. There's no drive connected to it, so it'll fail the other diagnostics. That's okay. I'm really just interested in the memory test right now. And C is correct. And so we're going to do two of the tests. I'm going to do the CTC and the dynamic RAM test. So we're going to try those. So single test four. And CTC interrupts are passing. That's good. I'm going to do single test and five. And I'm doing just single pass tests. If I'm really worried about this, um, I can do the longer loop tests and burn it in over a period of time. But we're not there yet. I'm going to do the DRAM test one more time. Very good. Okay. And we had a pretty good idea that that RAM was at least mostly working because Tristos 4.2 boots. So that's good. Okay, so this is going to equip me out to Tristos. We have to go back in. So it'll be main. And now we're going to go to the video menu. Now, I don't have the graphics card in this. So uh, this is just going to be test two, the non-graphics video alignment and pattern. Hit any key to display it. And there it is. Um, as uh, in previous video, I stretched this out a bit, so everything's nicely in focus, and it actually looks pretty good. I'm not fuzzy, not flickery or dimmy or anything like that. It's synchronized well, and the screen's nice and bright. There's no um, burn-in or anything on the CRT, so overall that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's go back into now the memory menu, because there's nothing else to do in the video men menu. And the first one we're going to do is the normal video RAM test. So let's do that. And we're going to skip the graphics board test because that obviously does not apply. I've noticed that all three of my 16, or Model 2 line machines, the 16, 16B, and the 12, have this sparkly effect when the screen is really busy. I almost liken it to the sparkly effect on the Color Computer 3 um, that you get with the first rev uh, gimme chips. I don't know. At first I thought maybe there was something wrong, but every one of these machines I've come across so far does this. So if they're not supposed to, um, and you know it, let me know. And this test passed. So the video RAM is good. Got 2K of video RAM. It's funny that there's a leading zero there. Could you upgrade the video RAM on this? That could be neat. Okay, now on the graphics boards, we're skipping that. Shadow ROM checksum. Now I think the either notes and jumpers or the service manual will tell me what the checksum should be. I don't know. But it's BFC0. Alright, we're gonna have to remember that. Hopefully, um, that's correct. I mean, the thing boots, I guess. If it's not, then. Yeah. Alright, checkerboard RAM test. And one thing, um, my Model 12 says this too. This is 96K. And I'm not sure why that is. I thought, or maybe it's just me thinking wrong, that this machine had 80K of memory with the extra 16K. It's got 64K on board, and then you either have the 16K on the logic board as in a Model 12, or on the 16B, that is not populated, but it is on the hard disk interface card. 
which is how this machine is configured. Um, so, 96K, checkerboard test passed, all right. And we're gonna do the modified address test. Actually, I think that went wrong, so I'm gonna do the coincidence test first. Okay, we have a successful pass on this one, so now we're going to go to the long one. And uh, you notice these videos have been filmed over different periods, so I have different beverages today. Just Diet Pepsi. We're not, uh, it's a little too early in the day to go to the good stuff. Let's do the bank select test. That was quick. Okay, and it passed. Now, it's time for the big kahuna, the modified address RAM test. So. This is going to go for probably half an hour or so. And we passed. So 256 subpasses counts as one pass, I guess. So excellent. That's the longest test. Um, so that covers the memory tests. I think we're in pretty good shape. So now let's uh, reboot and see what we get on the system tests. System tests. I'm going to skip the COM tests, the serial I.O. and all that because I don't have the wrap plugs on the serial ports or the jig for the printer port. So, um, for, oh yeah, pit break. For those, um, what I'll probably just do is connect the serial port to any one of these other machines in here and try it out. So, uh, let's start with the PIO test. And if I remember right when I did this on my Model 12 and my 16A, not all the tests pass, but I don't know what that is. Let's do the auto test as well. Okay, yeah, and this is what happened, I'm pretty sure, on my 12. So when we're done with these tests, I'm going to repeat any tests that fail over on the Model 12 and see what they do. And the reason is if I don't know what this is expecting or if I need something connected for this to, to work. So if anybody watching knows, oh, yeah, PIO, okay. Um, if anybody knows what I need to do um, to get these, uh, tests to work. I'm going to try them on the 12 to make sure, um, but we'll come to that next. Okay, so PIO test I have to do on the 12. Okay, CTC test. If I do need to put in or replace a PIO chip, I do have spares. I bought them for my 16A. We're going to do all the tests. I also have CTC chips if I need those. Very good, CTC test pass, all right. That's good, SIO test we have to skip. DMA test, let's do all. Ah, mouthful of Diet Pepsi. DMA test pass, excellent. Interrupt test, all right. Okay, some of those fail, five failed. Um, so these tests also fail. So I have to do this test and the other test on the Model 12. I don't think there are any other tests that I'm going to get to now. I don't have the 68,000 boards in, so we won't be doing those yet. Uh, the floppy tests I'm going to hold off on. So I think we're now in a position where I can run the Tristos 4.2 memory test, which is going to be next. And so we'll get that disk all mounted and see what happens. All right, today is actually, oh, I hate that damn deep. 2021, last day of 2021, good riddance. It is 1407. And click off. I know I could probably just not hook that back up, but it is a feature of the machine, so I don't like to disable things. Okay, here we go. All right, this is the full mem test, um, 64K. And this, I'm gonna do the full one to destroy DOS. It takes about eight minutes. So we'll come back. So that's it. Uh, that's the Tristos 2 memory test. As you can see, I uh, ran through all three. Tells me it's complete. Didn't say anything was wrong. So I'm gonna take that as green means good. And we're going to move on to booting four different operating systems. We're gonna do Tristos 2 OB, Tristos 4.2.5, and CPM, and LSDOS. And we'll just do some basic disk access, make sure we can read files, navigate around. It's fairly stable. This won't be comprehensive, but um, different OSs sometimes 
stress the harbor in different ways, so we'll see if anything comes up. And if anything does come up, we'll see if we can replicate it on another machine. And I'm going to redo the SIO, or the SIO, the PIO, and uh, interrupt tests on the Model 12 uh, just to see if it behaves the same way. And if it does, then at least I know not to just go chasing that waterfall yet, and more research is needed. So let's get booting the other operating systems. Up comes Tristos 425, which I was actually already running because that's what the memory test was in, so we're just going to boot that back up, play with some system commands, and see what happens. Okay, operating system booted. Once again, 1231. 2021, the year of Get the Fuck Out. Uh, it's 14. 18. Okay, so we're just going to do some basic things. I'm going to. Oh, well, first I'm going to turn off that damn click. Okay, thank God. All right, let's take a directory of drive zero and get the system files. And the memory test is a program, but we'll try and load a couple more. I'll load basic, I'll load the terminal. Okay. So we have files. Just get a library command here. And we got library commands. Let's go to basic. And this isn't meant to be a comprehensive set of tests by any stretch. It's really just to see if exercising the system, things run and execute, it's stable, um, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, that works. runs. Um, actually, let's enter terminal mode T. Okay. I'm surprised it doesn't say data carrier lost. We'll verify that on the 12, but I thought if there was nothing connected, and there most certainly is not, that it would tell me there was a carrier lost. So, all right, that might be a thing. Not meant to be a serial test anyway, but still. So let's see what it says is configured. Port A is disabled, that's probably why. Just trying to type in right in front of you. Yeah, I got that right. All right. Still nothing there. Okay, we'll have to come back to that. And we'll see what it does on the 2. I don't know, or on the Model 12. I don't know how that goes. All right. So I think I'm happy enough with Tristos 2 just kind of moving around. I'm really just trying to see if, like, program start, the thing kind of pretends to operate as a computer. Um, actually, let's boot up, for Tristos 2 OB, we're going to boot up a terminal program. Okay, and we're just going to enter the communications program. And again, we're not communicating with everything, anything. I really just want to see the thing operate. Okay, so we've got TRS-16, VT-102. I'm going to just do VT-102. The only thing is when it shows you the other drive. Yeah. All right, great, thanks. Now I can't see the file names on the first disk. I probably should just disable drive 1 or drive B on the emulator. We're up. Okay. Let us set communication attributes. Okay. Let's do that. Um, right arrow. Okay. 9600. 8. None. 1A. Okay, break screen complete, and now in the terminal. Oh, that's right, it was hold and then the key you want. Um, and I forget, I think H will take you back to the menu. Okay, so if I could break, hold H. I think I made a note of this somewhere, I have a note on my phone for how to, how to get back here. Yep, okay. Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, hold, 
hold H if you're using this program. It took me forever to figure this out because um, I couldn't find a manual for this. Um, hold H will bring you back to the help screen so you can navigate around in the terminal. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with Tristos 2OB and the application that's running here. Let's flip over to CPM and see what happens. Can I quit to DOS? Hold Q or should I Q? Yes, please. Okay. Q to quit. I'm a dumbass. Five. Exit from system. Do I exit to system? Anyway, CPM time. All right. This is Lifeboat CPM. I know there's differences and people like different versions, but um, I actually used this because on the Model 12, I used it for the... Um, I used it for the the, tier, uh, the IDE adapter. Okay. Let's see here. What do we have on here? Let's see if we can set up. Oh, no setup. What do we got here? I'll config on this one. Hand Harbor Handshake. I'd like to extend this Laurel and Hardy Handshake. Okay, oh just modify 7. Experience size is not implemented in this release of CPM2. Of course not. Okay, and actually, I'm just kind of look at some files, see what we can get. Okay, there we go. Okay, what else we got on here? Do I have an ad? WS install. Do I have WordStar? Nope. I have a WS install doc. Let's list that. Oh, let's type on CPM. Oh, I don't ask. So I can ask DOS, but not. Okay. Read me doc. Yes, I can pause it, but I'm not really concerned with reading it. Just kind of wanted to do the files. And again, not really terribly comprehensive. Oops. Serial port A. And exit by striking the whole key twice. And now it's in terminal mode. Okay, so CPM is seems to be functional. I mean, again, not uh, terribly comprehensive. That's not really what I'm going for now. Just kind of enough to make me want to move on. So, it's I'm just going to type. Oh, let's do that. Oh, perfect. So it's just going to keep running. Can I break out of it? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So I walked away for a second. Excellent. And actually, I'm glad I found that test. That's a bit more of a comprehensive way to push on the system a bit. Very good. So last but not least is going to be uh, LSDOS. This one is not patched. There's 1434. Oh, well, that's not good. All right, well, what is error 22H? I wonder. Mm hmm. Interesting. All right, I'm going to have to look that error up. Shouldn't do that. Okay, directory. Oh, is it looking for drive one? Ahead. Thank you. Good. Okay. Now, well, that's not good. Cat command should not reboot the machine. And here, 22H again. Okay. And I'm sure let's see if it does it again, or if it executes me at this directory. Okay. Something here. Right. All right. One more time. I'm just going to see if we can load a program. 
help CMDs on here. Help loads. Should go to the category. Nope. Alrighty. This is awkward. Alright, I'm pretty sure this disc works and works on my Model 12. Um, one more time. I mean, obviously I know this is going to work. I just want to see what happens. Load file format error. Okay. Something ain't right here. Um, so before I start crapping my pants, I'm going to reserve panic um, and see how all this goes on the Model 12. If this acts this way on the 12, I will try another disc image before I go panicking. If it does not, I'm going to use the same emulator. I have the loft rec over there and use the same emulator. Uh, we have to repeat some of the Tristos diagnostics over there anyway. I have to do the, the interrupt test and I have to do the PIO test and see if, if these results match that. Um, and then CPM seemed to work okay. Tristos has seemed to work fine. I'm kind of surprised. I figured Tristos would be finicky, but um, okay. So we'll see how this goes on the Model 12 and then we'll regroup after that and we have our our baseline results. Okay, over to the Model 12, all started up and ready to test. So we have two tests we have to run on this, um, and then we're going to boot up LSDOS and see how that behaves. Now, I should note I'm using the same Lothrec floppy emulator, using the same Lothrec um, that I used on the 16B. So um, one of the things I want to make sure is that it's Apple, so the same SD card, same disk images, all that stuff. So the idea is I want to make sure that we um, introduce as few variables as possible here. So first uh, thing here, the PIO test. I'm going to just do auto test like I did on the other machine. Yep, same same exact result. Okay. So the bus test passed. Everything else failed just like on the 16B. Okay. So uh, the other one that failed was the interrupt test. And that's exactly the same result. All right, so I'm not going to sweat that. Okay, so we're going to say that with uh, the, the tests here, I'm not going to go down that road for the LSDOS thing yet. I'm not going to start yanking PIO chips or anything just yet. Okay, now let's see what LSDOS does. I don't know if maybe the disk is just shot, and I won't have to worry about it. Apparently I have all the disk images. Okay. So this is the same image that we used on the 16B, LSDOS 6 through 1 EX. And today is 1, 1, and it's actually 2022, 20, but I can't go past 11 here. don't care about the time of date. Okay. Well, that's... Oops. Just running all the stuff that blew up on the uh, the other machine. So okay, cat. Get a directory. There also. No error. Twenty two H's. Let's see if basic starts. Basic is the uh, the real killer. Okay. So what we've learned here is that the disk is fine, the emulator is fine. Something is up with a 16B with the disks. Um, I'm going to stick with the disks right now because it's passed so many different memory tests. So the first thing I'm going to do is break out the service manual and notes and jumpers and we're going to find the test points on here. There are test points to test out the floppy drive alignment timings and things like that. Make sure the controller is aligned. I'm wondering why Tristos works and LSDOS doesn't, but who knows? Uh, we'll find out. So that means I'm going to have to buy myself a toy. So now the next part won't be 68,000. Join me for part six, which will now be trying to figure out if the floppy timings are correct and adjusting them if they are not. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.